We'll look at a couple of quick examples of finding areas under the t distribution. So suppose we have a random variable t that has a t distribution with four degrees of freedom, and we want to know the probability that the random variable t takes on a value that is greater than 5.12. Well, first thing we should do is we should draw our T curve. T distribution looks a lot like the standard normal curve, only it has uh, more area in the tails, as we should know uh, by this point. And over here, we put 5.12, and our probability that T is greater than 5.12 is simply the area under the curve, because probabilities are areas under curves for continuous random variables, and that's what we want, the area out to the right of 5.12. At this point, I have two choices. I can go to a computer, and get it from there, or I can use a table and get an approximate area. So first, let's go to the computer. Here is the wonderful and free statistical computing package R, and it has a command, PT, which gives areas to the left of the value we look up under our T distribution. So if we put PT 5.12 with four degrees of freedom, we're going to get the area to the left of 5.12 under a t distribution with four degrees of freedom. Now that's not what we want though. We want the area to the right. We know that continuous probability distributions have a total area of one, so our area to the right is simply one minus that quantity, and we get an answer of 0 0.00344. So we have figured out that this area is 0 0.00344, and that's what we're looking for, and that would be our answer if we had access to a computer. Now, we don't always have access to a computer, so we might need to use a statistical table. So we have a t table. It's not going to get us an exact answer. It's going to get us a range of values. So here we have our t table, and we want 5.12 and 4 degrees of freedom. So here's my t distribution with 4 degrees of freedom. Now, the way this t table is set up, we are, we've got the values t given here, given in this first row. These t values have an area to the right of whatever is in the subscript. So I want my area to the right of, at 0, 5.12. Now 5.12 falls in between these two numbers, and that's very relevant for us, because the area to the right of 4.604 is 0 0.005, so I'm going to draw that out. My area to the right of 4.604 is 0 0.005, and the area to the right of 7.13 is 0 0.001, so I'm going to draw that out. So my area to the right of 7.173 is 0 0.001. Now, 5.12 falls in between 4.604 and 7.173, so it's only logical that this area here, our area that we seek, is less than 0 0.005, but greater than 0 0.001. And that's really the best we can do without a computer. So if we go back here, then what we're saying is what we found is that our area has to be less than 0 0.005 and greater than 0 0.001. That's by the table. The table told us this bit. Now if we had the computer and we found this value, we wouldn't have had to go to the table. But you might notice that this value is at least consistent with the range that we found from the table. So the true value falls somewhere in between 0 0.001 and 0 0.005. Let's do another example. So suppose the random variable t is a t distribution with 7 degrees of freedom this time, and we want the probability that t is less than negative 3.27. So I draw my t distribution. Sometimes handy to put 0 in the middle, because that's the median of our t distribution. And over here somewhere we have minus 3.27. And this probability is simply the area under the curve out here. That's what I want. So, lucky for us, if we go to a computer, that's exactly the area that computers give us. So we can do this rather quickly. In my computer package R, I would simply have to go PT minus 3.27 with 7 degrees of freedom, because that is precisely what R gives me, the area to the left of the value I look up, and that's what I need in this particular case. So that's going to be 0 0.0068. So this area is 0 0.0068 by the computer. Now if I had to use a table, what I'd say is I want that area to the left of minus 3.27. But you might notice that there are no negative numbers in this particular table, even though the t takes on negative values. This is because it is symmetric about zero, and we're have simply having a simple table that only gives positive values because we can figure out the area to the left of minus 3.27 by simply realizing that that is exactly the same as the area to the right 
of 3.27 due to symmetry about 0. So those two areas are exactly the same. Now here's my 3.27 over here. I have 7 degrees of freedom. So if we did this one a little bit more quickly this time, how we do it in practice, 3.27 falls between these two numbers. And if it falls between these two numbers, then my area must fall between 0.01 and 0 0.005. So this area is less than 0 0.01 and bigger than 0 0.005. So we found by the table, by the table, we found that that area was less than 0 0.01 and bigger than 0 0.005. Now you'll note that this value, the true value from the computer, does indeed fall in that range of values.